Hey everyone, it's Melinda with Tailored and Teal and welcome to another video. This is going to be a haul video of free to me items. While I have been home helping my mom with her health issue, we have also been purging her house and getting rid of things that she just doesn't need or want anymore. So that is what this haul is going to be. There's a little bit of everything. There's clothing, there's knickknacks, there's collectibles. I do have both of my dogs up here in the room with me. One of them may decide to get up and walk around the room. So if you hear a little tippy tappies of toe on the hardwood floor in the background, that's what it is. So first we're gonna go through a bag of clothing. Some of this I've looked up, most of it I haven't. These pieces of clothing are just bread and butter. There's not really anything like super great in here. So this is a t-shirt. I'm not sure if it's vintage or not, but it says December 25th on the tag. And if you couldn't tell, it is a Christmas theme shirt, but a comical shirt. So it says, next year I'm installing a windshield on the sled. It has all of these mosquitoes and bugs splattered all over the front of the shirt. And then there's Santa's belt right there. And the back of it is just plain red. I thought that that was really funny and should probably do well around Christmas time. Next up we have some jeans. Some of these are vintage and some you can't buy anymore. Like I don't think that Fashion Bug is still in business if I remember correctly. I could be wrong on that, but I'm I'm pretty sure at least the ones near me have all been out of business for, you know, 10 plus years. So there's Fashion Bug. These are a size 10 medium petite, but I can tell you right now, this is not 10 medium in today's standards. This is like a 12 or 14, but they are in good condition. Maybe a little bit of wear on the inner thigh, but not too bad. The reason why I like to list things like this is because you know when you find your favorite pair of jeans and then the company stops making it? Well, there are a lot of people in that same boat. So if someone is looking for these specific pants, they will be able to find them in my eBay, Poshmark, and Mercari stores. Oh, and Curtsy too. Next up is a pair of Bermuda shorts. This is the Amanda by Gloria Vanderbilt. Now I know that this brand doesn't bring a lot of money, but I actually have quite a few that are around the same size. So I might just lot them together. These are a size 14, just a longer style Bermuda. And it has these cute little rivets on the side too. We have another pair of Bermuda shorts by Gloria Vanderbilt again. This is also a size 14, but these are a little bit different. They don't have the little rivets on the side, but they do have the little vents. Next up, another pair of Gloria Vanderbilt. It is a size 14 again, and these are the Amanda Bermuda. See, I told you I had several pairs that kind of go together. So this is the exact same style as the one I just showed because it has the slits over here. It's just more in a lighter color. Another pair of Gloria Vanderbilt and another pair of Bermuda. These are very similar. Actually, they might be the same as the first pair because they have the little rivets there. Same size, size 14. Next up, I have some scarves. Oh, along with the tippy tappy of the toes on the hardwood, you'll also hear my dog Piper snore because that's what she does best. These handkerchiefs were most likely all my grandmother's. I do remember her wearing some specifically, some I've never seen before, um, but there's this beautiful one. Very lightweight, very delicate, but I loved the large flowers. We've got a little white hanky that has crochet on the trim. In fact, my grandmother might have done this herself. She was a big crocheter. We have another one here. And this one has a very dainty scallop lace edge. There is a little bit of maybe rust or something from whatever container it was in. Um, sticking this in some OxyClean or some Borax should help get rid of that or even just bleach to be honest, like a diluted bleach. We have another hanky. This one has embroidery on it with the roses. There's so much dust flying in the air right now. 
This one I really like the looks of. It's a little yellowed and will definitely need a bath, but it is just so pretty with all of those purple and pink flowers. We have this one with some roses. You don't really see these being used much anymore, except for like decorations or even crafting. We have this one with little hearts all over it. Hi, Piper. You just heard her snort down there. So these all come from my mom's house and Piper loves my mom. So anytime I bring stuff home that smells like my mom, um, she's always got to be around and always got to be smelling it. This one is also one of my favorites. It matches my shirt currently. have this one which is very similar to one I already previously showed. I thought that it was the same one but it's not. It's just slightly different. Then we have this one which has embroidery of hearts and a flower. We have this scarf that is sticking to my dry fingers. I liked the colors. Let's see there is a tag. This one says Craft Resource Center, CRC, and it's 100% silk. We have a plain pink hanky or handkerchief. This one is super pretty. This is a scarf. Love the color. It actually looks like it could be a table runner, but I know that it's not. This one is Glentex made in Japan and it is polyester. This one I really liked too. Let's see if there's a brand on this one. No brand or tags. We have this one. This one has some doo-doo down here that I'll have to get out. Um, this one also has no tag to it. Then we have this one, which is Daniel Couture. Nice peachy rust color. It feels like silk, but there's no tag on it to tell me if it is or not. So this one's kind of funny because we have an umbrella growing up that matched this. So apparently a scarf came with the umbrellas back then. <laughs> um, yep, we have this umbrella. I don't even know if that umbrella is still around to be honest with you. 100% nylon water repellent. There is no brand to it, but there is an RN number. And then the last scarf is this nice bright 60s slash 1970s looking scarf or handkerchief. I don't really know the difference, but I'm sure I will after researching all of these. This is um, acetate, twill, and printed, made in Japan. And then next over here, I have a whole box of stuff. This one still has cobwebs on it. <laughs> it's just an ornate 3D star, but it does have a little tab up here that you can hang it somewhere. I thought that this would be good for like a mid-century modern style home or even on top of a Christmas tree. Next up, we have a Precious Moments. I was a big collector of Precious Moments back in the 90s and 2000s. And then I kind of stopped once I went to college. Um, so my house was littered with Precious Moments at one point. It's dwindling down now, but there are still quite a few pieces left. This one is so cute does have a few small chips to it, um, which honestly is to be expected for this type of delicate material. This also still has dust all over it, but you'll see there's a little chip there. There's also a little chip there, but it's not terrible. And it's from 1999 and it says Expressive Blossoms. Next up, we have some tin cans. This is by Charles Chips. 
And it says Musser's Potato Chips Incorporated, General Offices, Mountville, Pennsylvania. And then there is a smaller one too. And I think that one of them has a dust bag. Oh yeah, it does. It has like a gift bag actually. Like I think you bought this as a set. There might've been one other as well, but I have the bag that goes in it too. It says in a class by themselves. I do not know if Charles Chips still exists. I know it's a Pennsylvania brand, but I haven't seen it, so I'm assuming it probably does not exist anymore. But these were surprisingly selling decently well on eBay, even if there's nothing in them. Next up, we have something that's also covered in dust. Um, a little tri-leaf trinket dish. There is no branding or anything on this. Um, you know, so it probably won't sell for a ton, but there are no chips or cracks, which was very surprising. Next, we have this giant turkey. This, I believe is chalkware. Kind of sounds like it. There is a very small boo-boo up here, but from this angle, you can't even tell. So it's this giant turkey, perfect for Thanksgiving. Oh, and there is a little bit of boo-boo there, but again, from the front, you cannot tell. And underneath it does have velvet. Next up, I have a box by Theory Muggler. That's not what's inside, but if I can sell this box, I will. So inside we have quite a few different things. These, which I will take out of the bag, is something I played with as a kid. You might think this is gross, but I thought that they were really cool. And I still think that they're really cool. So first we have a starfish. It is dried, so this used to be alive. I do not remember where my mom picked these up at. I don't know if it was like at a school field trip, uh, just as a souvenir. And then this one is kind of creepy, but I think it's super cool. It is a dried seahorse. And I was honestly just gonna throw these away because I thought who would want a petrified dead skeleton of a seahorse? Well, these sell for 15 bucks and these sell for like 10 to 12. So I'm glad that I looked these up. Not like I'm gonna make a ton of money off of these dead carcasses, <laughs> but better than in the trash. If someone else can enjoy them or craft with them or do whatever, I'm happy to pass them along. Next up, we have a little pin that has the word mom on it with a little cross. Then we have an adjustable ring, gold tone, adjustable. Does this have a brand? No brands, but it's still in pretty good condition considering it's like probably over 30 years old or more. Next up, I have a Timex watch. I honestly don't know what I'm gonna do with this. I don't know if I'm gonna change the battery. I'll have to look up to see if it's anything worth selling. On the back, it just says Timex stainless steel. Next up is a set of trinkets that kind of all go together. This is Victorian accessory ornament, a pink boot. My mom was really big into um, like shoes and purses, like little trinkets, not actual shoes and purses. My mom is not a shoe and purse kind of person, but she likes to look at them. Um, so this one, the little like Victorian boot, with all the flowers on it. This one is a blue handbag. Oh, this one's cute and it has a little chain to it as well. So I've actually listed two sets of these little like trinket handbag lots, not these ones particularly, but other sets that my mom had collected over the years. And the same lady actually bought both. The lady told me that she uses these for her like ladies luncheons at her local church, which I just thought was a super cute idea. Maybe she will buy this one as well. This one is called Pink Handbag. Okay, so it's very similar to the other one, just in a different color and design. And then we have one more of the Avon things. And this says Blue Shoe. Probably very similar to the Victorian one that we saw first. Oh no, it's actually a little bit different. It's like a mule. 
the styrofoam is totally broken on this one. Whenever I sell little sets like this, I always make sure to include the original box and packaging if I have it. I have this game. I have no idea if it's worth anything, but it's a Hershey's Billboard Classic Puzzle. Oh, I'm sorry, Guzzle. It's a game, it's a puzzle, it's a guzzle. <laughs> Um, this is from 1997, so I guess they're like really large, kind of like coaster looking things, and then you kind of piece them all, and it's a game and a puzzle. And the last thing in this little blue box is, this says 10 piece mini tea set. I don't think that's what that is. No, it's not. It's a little wind chime. So like I said, I really liked Precious Moments. There's a little uh, snowman and a little boy or a little girl, I'm not sure, with the wreath down here. This is from 1999. Next up, we have another box. This is the Danbury Mint, which is what the box says. Um, this is a set of Raggedy Ann ornaments that my mom ordered. Unfortunately, there is two missing I think I think she started to give them away as gifts and that was her intention and then she put them in a closet and never saw it again <laughs> uh, she did include these two items that she purchased from our local Goodwill it's just a piece of pottery that can be painted any way that you want but it is Raggedy Ann she paid 99 cents or it might have even been half off who knows my mom is very thrifty just like me and then she does have Andy, which he's a different color. He's like a brown color. But again, 99 cents. And here are the ornaments. They're all in their original bags. I'm not gonna take them out of the bag just cause that would take forever. But this one is called Skating Along. So that's Andy. And this one is called Downhill Racer. So there is Raggedy Ann on some skis. We have Peppermint Twist because Andy is sitting on a little candy cane. We have this one is called Platter of Treats. I am gonna take this one out because the plastic, you wouldn't have been able to see it, but it's Raggedy Ann. She made a whole bunch of cookies. We have this one is called Christmas Carols and there is Raggedy Ann singing some Christmas carols. This one is called Holiday Surprise and it's Raggedy Ann sitting down with um, a surprise, a gift in her lap. We have this one which says Snowball Fun. So it's Andy throwing some snowballs. We have special delivery. So there's Andy holding a package. And then the last one is called All Tangled Up. And it is Raggedy Ann literally tangled up in Christmas lights. I did see someone selling the full set brand new for 120, I think. But as of the last time that I looked, it hadn't sold yet. I doubt someone can get 120 for these. Um, I might even be selling them separately, just depending on how the comps are. But this was very exciting. So if you couldn't tell, my mom has several collections going on. So we have Raggedy Ann, we have Morton Salt, we have Avon purses and shoes. So I have some more Raggedy Ann items. So my mom, aunt, and cousin used to go to the Raggedy Ann Festival, which is in Arcola, Illinois. So that's all of these papers are from the festivals. I don't believe that they do this festival anymore. So these are technically collectibles and I do know that people are still looking for them because I've listed things like this in the past and they've sold very fast. So we'll be listing these probably all together in a lot. We have some odds and ends in this little white envelope. We have a little plastic bag from Target actually it says 1998 and it says Target on the back. A gift for you from Target. Raggedy Ann and Andy 1998 Simon and Schuster. We have some stickers. 
very 1970s, maybe 1980s. We have, I have no idea what these are made out of. Just like a thick canvas, but I think they're handmade, hand colored, hand cut out, and there's little magnets on the back of it. And now we have the big boy themed items. There's big boy restaurants and there's also Elby's restaurants. I'm not sure of the historical timeline of when they switched, but I have things that are both Elby's and big boys. So this is an Elby's coupon book. Uh, I'm sorry, gift certificate book. And there are actually still little gift certificates in here. I wonder what you could get for 50 cents when this was created. Maybe coffee or a drink. We have another big boy item. This is a menu. Um, this is from 2002. So it's not as old as that little book. I'll probably just lot a few of these big boy items up. Here is a big boy magazine. Um, oh, it's got Rosie O'Donnell too. And there's some comics in there. There's some like activities in the back. And there's also a menu. This is from 1997. Then we have a big boy uh, reporter. So it's the news bulletin of Frisch's restaurant, summer of 2002. Yes, people will buy this because I've listed some before and they got scooped up really fast. Back to the Raggedy Ann stuff. This is the magazine called Rags and it's from August of 2000. And it's all about the Raggedy Ann Festival, I think. Seems like it anyway. People would put ads in the back. Oh yeah, so it says in the back, it is published quarterly each August, November, February, and May. And then I also have a random Barbie comic. Um, unfortunately, the cover is coming off of it. This is from 1992. This is not really worth a ton, but I thought I'd give it a whirl and see what happens. This next item is something I actually purchased for my mom a few years ago for Christmas. No, I do not get upset when people give me back stuff that I've already bought them for Christmas because I will usually turn around and resell it. So no, that is not offensive to me. It's offensive to some people, but to me, no. So it is a national park game. It is a trivia board game. So this is for ages six and up, two to six players. And that's kind of what it looks like on the back. My mom loves to travel and go to national parks, so that's why I got her that game. These are unused postcards from Rome. I studied abroad in Spain and we took a holiday to Rome. So I had purchased these postcards to kind of remember so I didn't have to take as many pictures. Like here is the Piazza Navona. This is the San Pietro, which I have been to. Here is San Pietro again hear my dog in the background. So hopefully someone else can get good use out of these. Next up we have something inside of something. So this is a reusable bank, but it's got the Morton Salt Girl all over it. And there's a little slot up top here. It says, oh, it doesn't say anything. Let's see. It does not have a date on it, but I remember using it growing up where we kept all of our change. This is a Fisher Price toy, still rattles. It is Fisher Price Happy Apple, and it is from 1972. These are selling anywhere from 15 to $25, so I definitely wanted to scoop that up before it went to Goodwill. Now I have a whole bag full of cookbooks. My mom was a collector of cookbooks. Actually, I don't know if she was really a collector, more so just like was given to her and then just put them in a shelf. My grandmother was also a big baker and cooked a lot. So I think a lot of these were also hers. So we have um, the Hillbilly Cookin' Mountaineer style cookbook. Vinegar pie recipe inside. This one is from 1968. Next up, we have the Happy Cooker, which I just thought that this illustration was so cute. This is the Lake Wales Elkettes of 1974. 
Next up is 500 Recipes Natural Food Institute, 1949. This is very old. Next up, we have the Betty Crocker Bisquick Party Book. These little pamphlets actually sell pretty well if you have a few of them in a lot together. My dog has decided to snore again. The Best Loved Pennsylvania Dutch Recipes, including many of the Amish. And there's a whole bunch of pictures in here too. And this is from 1963. And then we have this random one. This is Comstock Easy Homemade Desserts That Say You Care. Okay. We have the very popular Betty Crocker cookbook. This is the picture cookbook. I have sold this same book before. Um, this one isn't in as good as condition. It's kind of coming apart here on the sides coming apart here. I'm pretty sure that most of the contents are inside. I will have to do some research and make sure that it's all there. If this was in better condition, it would sell probably for 20 to 25, but because it's in kind of rough shape, especially on the binder, it'll probably be more like 12 to 15. We have the Watkins Cookbook by J.R. Watkins in Minnesota. This one is from... 1938. Wow. Next up, we have another Watkins. This is Household Hints. This one is from 1941. We have the Blue and Gray Cookery Authentic Recipes from the Civil War Years. This is by Hugh and Judy Gowan. And I'm not sure when it was made because there's no copyright in it. We have, this one is at home with family and friends cookbook. My grandmother used to watch her on Cornerstone TV all the time. She was definitely a fan of that channel. This is actually volume two. I'm trying to remember what this lady's name was. Arlene Arlette. Oh, Arlene Williams. I have a good memory. Next up, we have the Tupperware Four Seasons Cookbook. It's got a little bit of separation of the binding over here, but not too bad. And then inside, there are lots of recipes with pictures too. We have this super old looking one. Cookbook from the Christ Church in Alexandria, Virginia. This one is different because it flips up like this instead of like a book going the opposite way. And this one is from 1950. The book of recipes compiled, arranged, and tested by the Women's Auxiliary of the Christ Church. And then the last cookbook I have is Kerr Kitchen Cookbook for Home Canning and Freezing. This is from 1990, it says in the back. Lots of colorful pictures in there. So that's the end of this bag. We have one small box to go and then we are done. Next, I have this little container here. <laughs> the thing that's on top, I literally pulled off of the wall of my mom's guest bathroom. It's a cute little girl on a little stool trying to look in the mirror with her little butt hanging out. And this says Sexton USA 1966. It does have like maybe a mold number up here. There is also a matching little boy down at the bottom of this, so I will show you that when I get to him. Then we have some binoculars. I have no idea if these work, if they're even worth any money, but this is a Bushnell, and this is one that like you can pull apart like that, and it comes with a string so you can carry it. And then there's this one that is very, very dirty, needs a really good cleaning, but I uh, thought it was pretty cool. And this one is a Tasco, eight by 30 millimeter with a strap. Next, I have this group of cards. I believe that they are blank. They have covered bridges on them. Oh no, they are not blank. They say, your kind expression of sympathy is deeply appreciated and gratefully acknowledged by the family of. My uncle passed away 
almost 15 years ago now and he loved 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 covered bridges he collected them he visited them he was in national societies of them um, so we sent these out as you know thanks to people that gave us food or gifts or whatever but these are all unused so i thought maybe someone else would like to use them so i will list them and see what happens here's the little boy it's a little bit more worn than the little girl is and then we have some old bank bags this is mid-state bank and trust company which i'm pretty sure is now considered m t I might be wrong on that, but I thought these would be cool for nostalgia or like a movie prop or something like that. This is just a little vintage in appreciation thing. You can put like a certificate in here or a picture or something like that. And then the last thing in this box is a giant container of vintage pop beads. My mom had a thing for pop beads probably back when they existed or like when they were popular and also into her much later adult life. She was always on the hunt for them. They need a really good bath because they smell. They've been in this bucket for many, many, many years. But if you haven't seen pop beads, let me show you how they work. They literally pop. You can kind of hear that, right? Let me do it again. So they pop and they literally just go together. So these were very versatile back in the day. You could change them out for colors to match your outfit. You could take a necklace and turn it into a bracelet by just taking the beads on and off of each other. And I don't know if my mom likes these for nostalgia's sake or just cause she thinks they're really cool, but now I have a whole bucket of them. So they will probably be sold as a lot. Pop beads, unfortunately, aren't really worth too much, but it'll be fun to list and pass it along to somebody else that will enjoy them. Well, that is the end of this free to me haul. I do apologize that my dog was snoring through at least half of it. That is just what she does. In fact, when I work from home and she sleeps next to me, I will have to wake her up several times to tell her to stop snoring because I can't concentrate sometimes. It doesn't always work, but sometimes she gets annoyed and she goes downstairs. But let me know down in the comments below if you have any knowledge or selling experience about any of the things that I showed. And let me know if you had a favorite item. I think mine were the vintage scarves from my grandmother, just because they're beautiful, colorful, and really well taken care of for the most part. And I look forward to doing some research on them. So thank you so much for tuning in and watching this video. And as always, I will see you in the next one. Bye.